This here is my Harman Kardon CD91 cassette deck that I uh, got at the thrift store a while back. Um, as you can see, it's very much taken apart uh, because it had all kinds of problems when I got it. Now, granted, I probably didn't pay much for it, so <laughs> so it's no big deal that I had to do all this to it, but, but whatever. Basically, when I first got it, it would power on, the little operate LED over here would come on, and nothing else would happen. You know, you could hit all the controls as much as you wanted, and it just wouldn't do anything. Now, this reminded me a lot of what had happened with my Iowa ADWX 110 when I first got it. And it turned out the problem with that was that a fuse, it wasn't really a fuse, it was a, a fuse resistor, I believe they called it. It was a, you know, looked like a resistor, but it was designed to act like a fuse. Um, well, one of those had blown. Uh, specifically the one going to the motor, which in that machine, everything was mechanically controlled off the main motor, so that basically made everything go dead. In this case, there's a logic component to it, so I wasn't entirely sure how the motor, because the motor wasn't working either. I wasn't entirely sure how the motor and the logic could go. Well, as it turned out, they were both powered off the same rail, so the same. And it, it did turn out, in fact, that this right here, which is another fuse resistor, tested open. So... So far, I've put in a little makeshift fix for that. I will be ordering the proper the, the uh, proper fuse resistor soon. Um, right now, I just have it kind of um, uh, jerry-rigged to make it uh, work for the demo I'm, I'm about to do, um, which probably I shouldn't really be doing, especially with matters as such as fuses, but I think for a few minutes it will suffice. Don't try that at home, though. Or if you do, I'm not responsible if you blow something up, or anything like that. <laughs> but anyway, it turned out, with this machine, that not only... Now, that was the first thing I that needed to get fixed. The next thing was a little more major than that. And if you look in here, you'll see that I have a rubber band going across the big flywheel here. Obviously, that's also a temporary fix, and again, it's because I need to order something. Um, and actually, this belt here is also just a random belt I found lying around. What had happened was, this had experienced what I like to call melting belt syndrome. And that also was something I was introduced to with the Iowa ADWX 110. And what that essentially is, is occasionally I've had a couple cassette decks, including this one obviously, where not only did the belt snap, but they somehow managed to melt in the mechanism, and the pieces just kind of got, you know, it melted this black goop, and just got all over everything. And it's an absolute pain in the butt to clean up. But as you can see, I cleaned it up in this machine. Um, and now there's some makeshift belts. As you saw, there were some makeshift belts in there to, uh, again, just to work for this demo. Again, it's, I need to order the proper ones. And I will eventually do that. Now, after that was fixed, there were more problems. <laughs> and next big problem I found was that this spindle right here, the take-up spindle, was not spinning freely. It was, it had a lot of resistance on it, as if it had kind of like gummed up, gummed up lubricant or something. So, what I did was, I eventually managed to pull this thing off. It took me a while to eventually realize that there is a really tiny, practically invisible uh, C-clip on the end of this. And once you get that off, this whole thing will come off. You know, once you take this the counter belt off. This belt was intact, actually. Um, so I pulled this off, and sure enough, there was just some gummed up oil on it. I cleaned that off, um, and put this back on, and sure enough, it is now spinning freely. I went ahead and did it on this, this uh, spindle also, to prevent that from happening in the future. And while I was in here, I also took this idler wheel out, and flipped the tire upside down, so that it would, um, you know, or flipped it inside out, I should say so that I could get a little more life out of it, because it felt like it was starting to wear out. And so with all that completed, I put all this back in, and it does seem to be working mostly correctly now, except for, of course, the excessive wow and flutter created by the makeshift belts, and, of course, the fuse resistor issue that needs to be fixed. Um, but yeah, so it seems to be working right now. 
Uh, let me show you, while I have this open, let me show you how this mechanism works, you know, from what I've figured out so far. And, of course, obviously, I figure this thing is not supposed to sound like, sound vaguely like a diesel engine, like it does now. So, some of that, I think, is related to the belts, but I might have to either crack open the motor and relubricate things in there, or I might just have to see if I can find a uh, replacement motor. Not quite something I'm looking forward to, although I do believe there is somebody who manufactures universal capstan motors, so I might be able to get a replacement. But so what this essentially does here is there are two belts over here. There's the makeshift rubber band one right here that turns that flywheel, which spins the capstan here, which is what pulls the tape forward. And then there's this one here that turns that wheel, which turns this gear. If I could align the camera on it. <laughs> and then what happens here is, see, I kind of need three hands to do this. But, you know, you know what? <sighs> Screw it. We use two hands and a foot. <laughs> what happens is, there are solenoids. Let me show you before I do that. There are solenoids back in here. Right down in there. And there's one up here. That move different arms and things in the, uh, in the mechanism to different positions. And among other things, it moves this gear around. So, like, if I hold this switch up so it thinks there's a tape in there, and I hit rewind, the gear jumps to the left, and it hits that spindle and spins it. If I hit fast forward, jumps right, contacts that black gear up there, which turns that spindle. Now, for playback, it's a little bit trickier. I'll we'll see if you can watch what happens here. This is going to be a pain in the butt to trigger, because the button's a little bit recessed. Um, hmm, how do I want to do this? Oh, I'll just come over here and... No, but then you can't see it. Okay. I'll have to figure something out here. For now, let me explain how this works. Back there, there's a solenoid that allows a gear to come into contact with the, um, a gear on the capstan shaft, which moves the uh, head block up into position. Now, as that's happening, it also pushes this idler wheel up in between this disc here, this black disc, on the, um, on the take-up spindle, and the, this little shaft on the end of this gear. And that is what turns this. Now, let me see if I can actually let you watch that in action. Let me see here. Maybe if I switch hands... I will get this. If I balance the camera on my knee here... <laughs> See, I will always find a way to make it work. That's what I'm good at. Sorry for the wobbly wobbliness here. But that is how playback works, and that black gear up at the top isn't really doing anything. It's just connected to that... to the, um take-up spindle, so it just spins mindlessly. And as you can see, the headlock came up, pinch roller comes up against the capstan, and all that fun stuff. Um, so yeah, that is how the mechanism on this machine works. And in a second, I am going to put the, put the front cover back on, make this look somewhat more like a cassette deck, and actually demonstrate this with tape. So, back in a second. And we're back with something that looks a little more like a, like a cassette deck, and I turned that bright work light off, so maybe you all can see it not washed out now. Um, I had to glue this cover back, this, um, um, this door cover back on, uh, because I managed to break it while taking it off, because it apparently does not just slide off the way norm most of them do, and actually it looked to me like someone had already tried, tried that and broken it, so. So this is now glued on. So I certainly hope I don't have to do an alignment on this. Um, but either way, I now have a tape queued up in it. Uh, we're almost not quite queued up, but loaded and ready to go. Um, still have the uh, top and bottom off, because at some point I am going to have to put in the real fuse resistor and the real belts. But just so you all can see how this works now. And of course, it still sounds like a diesel engine. Um, 
now we're gonna get getting a lot further than we, than I did when I first got it. Also, you can see there is a uh, light in there that does work. And this will get going in a second when the tape runs through its leader. See what I was saying about maybe not queued up per se. Speed's probably slightly off. And if you have a really good ear, you might hear the excessive wow and flutter for, from the, uh, the bad belt. But it does actually reproduce audio, so we're getting somewhere. Turn that off before we get yelled at by the uh, copyright police. Um, Dolby Circuit does work. Um, in fact, it works pretty well. I have to say, it's one of, the, one of the better Dolby circuits I've heard. I will say that. Um, but other than that, everything else really seems to work. Um, just another quick overview of all the controls now that I have everything up here. Uh, you got counter reset, usual transport controls here, uh, manual tape selection, uh, headphone jack that is, as usual, really loud, um, Dolby on off. Uh, it does have switchable, um, switchable FM multiplex tone filter. Uh, which is nice, so that way you don't throw off the Dolby if you um, are recording something that doesn't is not coming from FM stereo radio. Um, recording balance, recording level, and that's pretty much it. You just got two LED level meters, record and pause indicators, mechanical counter, Dolby LED, and then there's this power on LED labeled operate. Um, but yeah. Other than that, I'll probably do an update video on this once I get the belts and all that fun stuff done. Um, but for now, that will be it. So stay tuned for more about this and uh, other stuff.